Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talk about supply chain issues causing bourbon to just disappear in New Zealand. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Kaylee Baker, Kathy Cole, and Katie Joyce. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey. Hello. 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 Hey, oh, so yeah, we're going to have fun today. We're going to be talking about New Zealand and uh, the fact that they've run out of bourbons. They've got some supply chain issues and uh, they need some bourbon. So send them bourbon and, uh, but we'll talk about that and what that means and uh, yeah, how, how we get to this point and uh, how mad would we be if this happened to us, if we happen to be stationed at, maybe we're working on a job, we get stationed at New Zealand for like a year and it's the year they run out of bourbon. So we'll talk <laughs> about that in just a little bit. But for right now, McNew said there's something she want to talk about. What is that, McNew? So is there a TV show or movie that people recommend to you saying, hey, I think you would really love this. It seems right up your alley. You should absolutely watch it. And you were just absolutely not into it. Like okay. could not do it. Tried very hard. Not yes. for you, even though it was recommended to you. Game of, Game of Thrones. I mean, uh, <gasps> dragons and all that. Yeah. That's terrible. Just, uh, just a horrible show. Doth go over there. I, I, you know, I don't even understand the wording, and I, I can't keep track of who the Gregorian. Uh, the, uh, there's all these names. I'm like, I'm lost. I don't know who's. Fuck the names. What is I made up names as I went along. The names don't matter. Just go with it. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I didn't I, know what was I, like, happening. Like I couldn't even get Cersei right. I called her Cece most of the time. Like you just make up names. It didn't I, matter. Uh, I didn't understand. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, there was always like a couple good moments in there where it kept me going for a little while with the show, you know. So how far but, did you get? Um uh the dragons where they they got the she got to, she actually got dragons. Uh like that, season that was two? Maybe. Season two, yeah, somewhere in season two, I believe. So, yeah, I, I like the like, Jason Momoa character when he died. I I, I hated that. He liked that when crazy. he died. <laughs> well, you did like it. when he died, or you? Hated I didn't it? like it. I thought okay. I thought he was a great character. I thought that's oh. stupid. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't everybody die? I've never watched Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't watch it. It's either. terrible. Either. Yeah, it's, it's so. F, I mean, F the F last minus. season was. I mean, everyone agrees the last season was horrible, but every. Everything else of it was so wonderful. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. No. Costumes. I'm going to a charity gala next month. Yeah. So actually, yeah, it's still next month when this airs. And it's the theme of the gala is storybook. And if you registered soon enough, you got to choose which story. Uh, and they had preset ones. In my table, we chose Game of Thrones. And you get to choose how into it you get to dress. And you can choose how into it you want to go even into like dressing up. And so I may be dressing up as Brienne of Tarth. We'll see. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I give that show an F. Yeah, it's bad. No! F, F, no redeeming qualities. F, F minus minus no redeeming qualities would be my no! official score. No, there's so much good about it. No, it's bad. It's so bad. Yeah. I disagree wholeheartedly. Uh, I never I got into Breaking Bad. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, man, that's, that's unfortunate. Okay. It's a okay. good show. It's a good show. Kind of went right? maybe a season too long. I don't know. It feels like they could have come. It, it just kept going, but uh, yeah. That's like Dexter. The last season was just horrible. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. The original Dawn of the Season. Like that. They did that relaunch, which was actually pretty good. I like the relaunch. I haven't seen all of it yet. I, still, I like that. Uh, I like that. I, well, I didn't the last season it. was terrible of Dexter. They ran out of ideas, and then they kind of let him off the hook. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just mm -hmm. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think a lot of shows need to to shut down like a season earlier. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, like Katie just talked about Game of Thrones. She's even a fan, but she didn't like the last season. So yeah, well, they, they no, go into it. The problem is they rushed it. They should have turned the last season into like three seasons. Oh so gosh, more of that? No, I, I gotta, I'd have to vote <laughs> against that. I, uh, it was too much already. Yeah. No, just bad, bad form. Kaylee, is there anything that people said to you, you should like this, and then you tried it out and you're like, no, I, this is terrible. Um, I don't Design. know. I I feel like as far as watching things, I can't really think about. But like people always told me, if I'm a whiskey person, then I should love scotch, and I just don't love scotch. No, they're, they're, they were lying. To <laughs> they're, 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 nobody like here loves scotch. No, yeah, this, this is the Bourbon Daily. So is that yeah. a TV show? Yeah, that's a TV show. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're okay. called Nobody Loves Scotch. Well, uh, all right. Piggy there's Blinders. definitely shows. That reminds me. Oh okay. my god, yeah. I I didn't like that one at all. Um, Katie, Katie is, you haven't answered the question. You were critical of my response. Let's hear what uh what you <laughs> didn't like. Peaky blinders. I tried really hard okay. to like it and I yes. couldn't. Nah, I knew going in I wouldn't like that one. I so wanted I so cry. much to like it and I just could I need to I'll try it again, but I couldn't. I don't love the office. I only like the office, which I feel bad about. I, I feel like you're an office person or you're a parks and rec person. I, it would, I, 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 I am an office person, parks and rec person, and new girl person. Like, I, oh, I, there's gosh. no. no I, I don't like any of those. That's a bad trifecta there. Not into the office. A hundred percent. That's with parks and rec. Still rewatch it. And I felt like something was wrong with me, maybe. And so, but I, I realized I hadn't tried parks and rec. So I just recently started watching that and I am enjoying it. Oh. Although. It's funny. The... One of the only scotches in my collection is Lagavulin 16 and Lagavulin. <laughs> 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 it's from <laughs> Parks and Rec. <laughs> oh, terrible. Uh, another one I don't like is Friends. I mean, that's a terrible show. And then Jim I told like me, Friends. Oh, yeah. I can't stand it. But then you know, Jim told me, oh, man, do you want to, I got one of the best movies going on. And it's something called John Wick. And it's got Keanu Reeves as like a, I can't a suave. Uh, uh, yeah. Has anybody seen Spiderhead on Netflix? Spider head. Spider head. No. No. I think it's called Spider Head. Well, um, sounds, uh, I'm gonna figure it out, but or... I, I just that's the it, one with it, Chris Pine. No, is Kevin Reeves in that uh, one too? Because he was in a John Wick and he was terrible. Which Chris, Chris Hemsworth? Just hating on Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is well, anything Chris with Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth is worth worth. Have you seen Thor: Love and Thunder? I did. I went to the movies and saw this. God. That. It's, yeah, it's, hey, it's, John it's, Wick. Chris it's like the Miles biggest Keller. block of Velveeta. I'm going to go watch it a few more times. I'm Chris John Hemsworth. Wick. I'm a Chris Hemsworth and Miles Teller. Watch Spiderhead if you haven't seen it. I don't know. I thought it was really good. It's, it's pretty fucked up, but it's pretty good. I get that John Wick is is totally bad. Right. It is. But it's there's horrible. something about it that you can turn it on on a Sunday afternoon. Like, Do you remember the... the Steve, you might remember this. Channel 11 in St. Louis used sure. to have this Sunday afternoon afternoon movie, one, two, and three. Uh -huh. That's something I can see on that. John that, Wick. Yeah. John Wick. That, that deserves to be on Channel 11. It's so bad. That's I can't watch John Wick. We're so bad we're on Channel 11. So there you go. Catch us on Channel 11. I can't, I can't watch anything where an animal Definitely gets upset. hurt. I can't do it. Does that happen in John Wick? Don't read Stephen King. Mm -mm. No. No. Oh. That's like if I'm watching a movie and all of a sudden a dog appears, I have to pause it. And there's a, a website of Does the Dog Die? And I make, <laughs> and I make, John, I make my die. boyfriend go look up the movie on Does the Dog Die? Because I can't even look it up myself. This is actually very helpful. And he looks it up on Does the Dog Die? And it'll tell you, Does the animal get hurt or do they die? And then he'll tell me whether I can continue watching the movie or not. And there's been a few times that we've been watching a movie. Service. 
and he'll tell me he goes i'm sorry but you can't keep watching this movie and i will stop and go cut this off this is good information actually would they if they made that a pay per uh uh, website would you would you pay katie i would absolutely pay per you nine dollars a month uh, you could see the dog because like my week would be ruined (laughs) if i see an animal get hurt in a movie i cannot stand it like (laughs) homeward bound worst fucking movie ever because even though they're okay i'm in turmoil the entire time katie do you have like substantial childhood trauma from that movie? Because yes. I do. Yes. I do. What about old Yeller? Like, I'm like no, is, like horrible. Even Fireball Goes West. Oh my a par- God. Like, I, a cartoon. I can't Papa. freaking stand it. Fireball right? Goes West. <laughs> oh God, Fireball. Fireball yeah. Goes West. Or Fireball <laughs> Cartoon. What if it was a cartoon dog? Yeah, that, that's. I can't. Does not it. matter. Doesn't matter. They can't die. They're not allowed to. Like, what if it was Keanu Reeves in a dog costume? I will watch like a war movie. <laughs> they can kill that dog. You can yeah. kill off as many humans as you want in a movie, yeah. and I will watch it. No problem. Hi, I'm John. A Wick. dog walks on the scene, and you insult the dog. You call the dog ugly, and I will be upset. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm on the same page. Movie. I love horror movies. I'm that John dog Wick. Better I'm be a okay. better be nice to that Hi, dog. Jim. <laughs> there can be thirty people killed in this movie and if one dog is harmed, one dog dies. More upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah all right McNew, uh you asked the question is there anything that uh, you got into that you were like oh this is just horrible when it should have been no good? so everybody no? is you can't ask the question be like oh that's not a problem for me i like everything <laughs> watch stranger things and i have tried oh so the first hard. season is good that yet. so hard to get into stranger things i don't even know what's happening this last season i'm done with it, it. it i even has a fictional hawkins indiana they're like it's they're like mcnew it's weird it's indiana it's up your alley it has not been i yeah, have not it's terrible I but i'd still watch it before john wick yeah, i know that things. yeah hi and i'm john, I, john I wick too so i think i want to play it while Freeze, i'm, I'm so, john like maybe wick. like Osmosis will make it get into my brain. I don't know. Just, you know Consciously, you'll wake up and you'll be eyes. a stranger. You're thing. under international <laughs> arrest. I'm John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good acting. Oh, Jim's like, oh man, it's good. Oh, it's um, horrible. It's so horrible. I love stranger like things. But He's like I, the nicest person ever. I hear. He probably like is. I, I, he probably is, but he can't act. I, I, I'd ha- have a beer with the guy, but I don't want to watch him on on, uh, on the big screen. Or Kathy, even the text yeah. me about your Stranger Things. <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. Do you I, like I, Stranger I, Things, I, Kathy? I do. I love Stranger Things. What uh, the hell's I happening? I have no two, idea. Because season one was not working for me at all. Season one is good. better than only season one, in my opinion. Yeah. But I have only just finished season two so i don't know oh yeah, so i i just season one i was like i am so fucking bored why are people season into three that? it gets bad and it goes w- downhill from there yeah it's all wow. so awesome it's science fiction these kids like are the age i that they they're growing up when i was you- their age okay so just, all this so you relate references to all going to the roller rink just watch the uh, wedding singer. It's better. That, 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 <laughs> that's that's the '80s for me. That's that, that movie reminds me of my high school years and whatever. So yeah, merciful heavens. I, I want so much to like Stranger Things. I have just not got there. So it's supposed to rain all weekend. I'm like, I'm just gonna put it on in the background and see if something clicks that might interest me while I'm doing watch other things. Stranger Things and me and John Wick. I'm Keanu. <laughs> I, I, How far did you get into season one? That's my I question. Three, three yeah. episodes and I fell asleep. I was oh, not. That's a good show. You so, try yeah. it a little, because like, it took me a while to even to get into Schitt's Creek. Like, I had to give Schitt's Creek yeah. the yeah. of Schitt's season Creek one. Took oh. me a minute. But I was, I was already invested because I'm I watched it, that it was good and I trust him. So I was already invested for that reason. But okay. yeah. all right. On that yeah. note, yep. we'll drink. I'll go first. I've got St. Cloud bourbon here. So there you go. Cork pop. That's a nice, it's beautiful, right? All right, here we go. Oh, beautiful, crisp. That was, beautiful. That was a very crisp cork pop. <laughs> Easy to say. All right. I've got the lead. It feels like it could be beat, but we'll see what happens. Uh Katie's ready to go. What do you got, Katie? I have some Tom's Town bourbon. Okay. From Kansas City. Huh. All right. Tom's that's Tom's Town. I like the bottle. It's such a pretty bottle. It's so 1920. I know. Yeah. 
It's oh, such like a good that. bottle to gift to people because yeah. it's so pretty. I hope I get one of those. I, I don't want to know what Kaylee's going to do with that bottle, but no. that's <laughs> <the bottle. laughs> you can find yeah. out on my only bourbon account. <laughs> uh, only bourbon, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. A lot of build up that there. Was, that was the longest course right? I've ever. <laughs> it, 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 she was like shaking. It was like. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've got the lead here. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if it holds up. Kaylee, you're next. What do you got? Uh, I'm going back to my Leatherwood Checkpoint Rye. No, no, not enough there. Not enough there. She I went back to the well the second too many times. Too night. many times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, McNew, you're next. Um, I have some Driftless Glen. Not a lot left in there. We'll see what happens. Okay. No, yeah. nothing there. Nothing there. I've got the lead. All right, Kathy, what do you have? I am really excited about this. I have Buzzard's Roost Straight Rye Whiskey Toasted Barrel. It looks toasted, new. Toasted. Okay. It yeah, is it looks, new. looks like I've a new been, bottle. I've been hoarding these. Okay. Okay, oh. there's a, there's a, that's the right. sound of victory, too. She, she, stole the, she stole the victory from me there, so that's ridiculous. <laughs> Way, to go. Go. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go. Cheers. Cheers. I'm John Cheers. Wick. Ding. Cheers. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. We'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about New Zealand running out of bourbon. Is this a problem? Do we care? We'll get to that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon, as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. My name is Heidi Topol Eller Fosnott, and you're listening to the Bourbon Daily. That's right. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about New Zealand maybe running out of bourbon. Yeah, I, are they out? I, it seems they're, like are they completely out? Is it compli gone? There's not even a bottle left. Out? I don't think. I don't they're think desolate. there's even a bottle left. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it gets into the situation. Uh, a lot of us who end up, you know, people call us hoarders and stuff like that. But now we read this, and it's like, see, this could happen. Look what's happening in New Zealand. So yeah, you got to build up your stock. So. 
Um, yeah, what do we think about this? Is this is this a big deal? Do we care about this? Or are we worried about our fellow bourbon fans uh, down in New, New Zealand? I feel like somewhere in New Zealand, there's a store that's benefiting off of this and has everything so high on the shelf that people are saying that there's no bourbon in New Zealand because mm-hmm. this one store is hoarding it all. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's, like it's, it's the stores that hold a bottle of Elijah Craig barrel proof at $1,300 in their store right. or something, you know, like yeah. that's so, the only stores that have bourbon left over there right now. There is an important part that goes along with this that was in the title along it that we have to pay attention to here. Okay. Because it talked about in, in like the description below this article that we all present. I loved the combination of their concerns here because it talked about the shipping delays and bottlenecks along with the rising popularity of the hard liquor, how it's caused a shortage accompanied by a dip in chicken, chicken nugget stocks. <laughs> hey, it's very so they're important. not only running so, out of bourbon, they're running out of chicken. Yes, so really it's tied those two together. Here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is oh, just okay. not a bourbon, fun place right now. And not just chicken or fried chicken, but chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. That's chicken that's nugget. So they're chicken. having no fun in New Zealand. The, that's finest, right. <laughs> the finest cut of chicken. Right. The I nuggets. mean, yeah. what is a lack of <laughs> bourbon if you also cannot have chicken nuggets? Right. You know what? So any anytime I DoorDash anything for lunch, it's usually a shitty fast food restaurant on DoorDash. But I get my dogs nuggets, and they very much look forward to getting their nuggets when they see a person come okay, to the door. So with this that. is what you, they're, you they're, should they're have talked trained. about on your. Yeah. So now so we care because I can't have bourbon and my dogs can't have nuggets. This yeah. is a problem. I can't live in New Zealand. That's a hellscape. No. <laughs> I, <can't. laughs> I mean, maybe we don't care about the people of New Zealand, but certainly this group cares about the dogs of New Zealand. The dogs, the of dogs New in New Zealand, Zealand are not getting their chicken nuggies. Chicken then we <laughs> now we care. <laughs> Isn't New Zealand just like a cheaper version of Australia? I mean, yeah, yeah. We're going to piss off like some people with that scary animals there anyways. <laughs> I don't think you want to visit. Huh. So, I, I mean, maybe maybe they have their own culture, but I thought it was like a worse Australia. That's so what I thought So the too. thing I noticed, and I felt really I like bad Australia. about it, because I, I try really hard to keep a difference between Australia and New Zealand mm-hmm. is it talked about the ready to drink beverages and about how they have their canned beverages that have bourbon in them. Right. And I the first thing I thought of is that I have a friend in Australia. And when we video chat, he has like bourbon and cola and like gym and it would be like beam and cola or like, yeah, beam and yeah. like beam and ginger. And I noticed it was before just recently that became more of a thing after COVID here in the U S and I was right. super jealous because we mainly only had the brewed beverages in our cans. We mm-hmm. couldn't have the liquor in the can in most of the U S and it was like, Oh, I try so hard. And immediately I was like, Hey, that's like Australia. And so I feel really bad, but that's the same as well in Australia. So I know for sure those ready to drink is very popular with the mm-hmm. mid, what also kind of us people who drink some of the higher range bourbons here who probably listen to this would call it low range bourbon of like the Jim Beam and Crown Royal that they need for those ready to drink canned beverages is I think a lot of what their shortage is for. And that they cannot get those for those drinks. Oh. I picture New Zealanders I, I being I'm... big into beer. Beer? I, I think they're big into beer. Why do we yeah. think that? I don't know. Because they play rugby. New Zealand's <laughs> big into rugby? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought actually, they were known as Kiwis down there. I know, so I thought, I know I th- one I person from New Zealand Kiwis. and she does play rugby. <laughs> She, play, she guy, plays rugby. A person I knew from New Zealand also plays rugby. So this is, so yeah, there you go. New Zealand They're known for the rugby. That's two for two. Yeah, Kathy's statement holds so far. I, oh. I know nothing, nothing so about the, nothing about the other Zealand. part I saw from this. So if it's true that what they're getting in their ready to drink beverages, and if they're getting what would be kind of our, our mid to low of like our Jim Beam and our Crown Royal and those kinds. I believe in our markets here through COVID of what rose the biggest was that mid range. It wasn't necessarily like the Pappy and the Weller that really 
skyrocketed through COVID, it was that mid range of like the Jim Beam and that hit the biggest through COVID that saw the biggest spike. So I could see why the U S having the biggest spike in that mid range bourbon through COVID is now causing the issue in New Zealand now. Right. So absolutely. I'm seeing the timeline of why New Zealand's hurting now because of COVID. And we got to fix this friends. I I want the good people of New Zealand to have their bourbon. And uh, so what do we got to do? What do we got to do? We got to get we them some bourbon. We all ship a bottle of bourbon to... We got to get them bourbon. I mean, they're yeah. fellow bourbon fans. You think that's what's great about the bourbon community is you instantly have that bond over bourbon. We shouldn't... They shouldn't be kept away from that. Uh, we got to figure something out here, U.S. We got we to gotta get the people... If, uh, s- s- send a flight. To whatever we got to do. Uh, if get, everyone get some- from the Bourbon Daily uh, <laughs> fan base just sent yeah. a sample to New Zealand, yes. how long would that's, it take? I think that's it. That's the solution. So they're yeah. used to their ready to drink of just like the standard main brands okay. we need to show them all of our other brands that they could use to mix their own so we, we can send them, them the they could using all these other brands that we have and they can mix it with their own coke or ginger or whatever yeah. the heck they want to mix it with they yeah. just weren't aware or yeah. they could start drinking it straight like yeah. us cool people you know that's true and be like us awesome americans you know yeah. they, you know want to be like Make I, I want to strike a deal or something because they're called the kiwis and i feel like that's for a kiwi bird if you send me a bird i will send you a bottle wait Easy. how is the bird gonna make it alive right what? How, how do you know it's not the kiwi it fruit the Maybe it's i don't, the I don't know fruit. how you ship a they just animal, send you the fruit me. i want it what about the Pick fruit it yeah well, you could make cocktails inspired with kiwi fruit that includes no, bourbon i don't want that i want a bird adina get to work what a bird Send me okay. a bird and I'll send you a I bottle. Want a kiwi maybe we shouldn't yeah. discuss your illegal bird smuggling on a podcast that gets aired. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah McDo. Just uh, as some feds, of my legal advice here. I don't yeah. think this was really a test. I'll get a yeah. permit or whatever. You'll I'll get a you. permit. Sure, sure. A yeah. permit the, or whatever. The, the, the ship kiwi bird, bird permit. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I, I will say, coming from a rural town, I went into the post office one day and there were live chickens in the <laughs> in the mail. Like, you, so, so my mom really? works 100%. in a very, uh, my mom works in a rural post office. She gets chickens in her office very often. Yeah. Really? I walked so in one day and it was chicken. like ah! it was like rooster called, and I was like, what Why would you have to get that? chickens through mail order? They're they're you can. You can. Uh, <laughs> They go down to Sular. They got chickens down there. You can get a chicken. You want a chicken? I'll get you a chicken. I also ship me a kiwi. All right. Anyway, I also would like us to imagine the poor New Zealander. You thought they're called New Zealander, New Zealand, New Zealand, or just kiwis? Just call them kiwis. The poor kiwi (laughs) who cannot get. I hope it's not degrading. Ready to drink bourbon drink and cannot get their chicken nuggets. Like imagine this person who it's their favorite. Like. Jim Beam and Ginger. Hey, and Mom, I'm gonna run out. I gotta get some nuggets. Uh, some, some nuggets and some. some <laughs> yeah. okay. On a Tuesday afternoon, and yeah. both of them are out. Someone's like, they, very upset over there. Like, we might crushes your soul. On. Yeah, it Check crushes on your, your New soul. Zealand friends. Yeah. I, I hope they still <laughs> can get fries. To this fries. Like, if I can't get nuggets, hopefully I get some good fries. Hopefully that's still happening for them. Right. Well, maybe we could send them reruns of John Wick movies uh, as a <laughs> consolation. Oh my God! We're out of bourbon and nuggets, but here's some John Wick movies. Enjoy. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Kaylee, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me out at Leatherwood Distillery at one of our two locations, or come see me. I mean. Follow me on Instagram at Kaleo Baker or at the Bourbon Bakers. Okay, fair enough. So you at the distillery uh, follow you online. So there. yes, yes. yes. Kathy, Don't how follow about me you? at the distillery. That'd be oh, creepy. That'd be creepy. All right. <laughs> Kathy, how about you? Once I figure out how to post things, you can find me on the Instagram machine at Kathy <laughs> Strength. Ah, uh, that's exciting. We're all waiting. We can't wait. To I see know, right? Time. Great posts. All right, uh, Katie, how about you? You can head on over to Instagram and find me at Katie Proof. All right, McNew. 
I am on Instagram at McNeil ABB. Right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you very soon. Looking forward to that. It'll be tomorrow. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Hey. Y'all come back now, you hear? Bye. <laughs> Peace. Bye. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat Offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's Birthday Barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.